Hey, I am three plus key, your favorite social worker. I'm here to encourage you to pursue the smile by prioritizing the Lord, your physical health and persistent education. And we're here today to talk about tardiness. Womp womp. So what is tardiness? It is the quality or fact of being late, uh, aka pure lateness. You are not on time. So in addressing tardiness, we want to look at um, the culture's concept of time, why you are late, what, if anything, have you tried so far, how serious you are about fixing this problem, and um, a biblical approach uh, toward tardiness. So first and foremost, let's consider the culture's concept of time. The elements of culture are values and beliefs, norms, symbols, and rituals. And um, culture can come with any type of community. It could be work culture, your family's culture, organizational culture, such as your church or uh, recreational activities that are organized. And um, maybe community culture, such as your neighborhood, uh, certain norms such as this. And then to define time, it is when a plan or arrangement should happen or when it should be done. So when we're evaluating our culture's concept of time, let's choose one. So the the culture uh, of work, some of us work 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., if you work at a place where tardiness is completely unacceptable, 905 is in fact tardy. If you have a more lax company culture regarding tardiness, perhaps you come in at 905 and that's perfectly acceptable, but 910 or 915 is actually considered tardy. Or let's say your neighborhood has a block party would it be acceptable for you to come in 30 minutes after the start time? Probably so. You have to consider the culture and the uh, way they um, uh, uh, perceive time um, as far as how you need to proceed. Again, some people are, have very stringent um, requirements regarding time and others are very, very lax. I also know varying um, communities have uh, different approaches toward um, time as well. Um, it may be acceptable at family gatherings where your person, uh, people are of your same ethnicity or race or religion or what have you, they may have a perception of time that is far more lax than what your work culture would dictate. So I hope um, that part is made clear. I would take some time to reflect on the many cultures um, that you intend to abide by. Again, work is different than a neighborhood party. Um, showing up on time or not to dinner with your nuclear family may look different than what it looks like to show up on time or not for uh, church services, right? And we all are a part of many, many different communities um, and the cultures therein. So um, take some time to reflect on those cultures and their concepts of time. Uh, second, why are you late? Uh, please consider that. Uh, it could be you actually don't want to be there, right? You've shown up to work 15 minutes late for the past week, and it could be to avoid somebody or you're just burnt out. That's real life, but take stock of that and be honest with yourself. Uh, why are you late? Do you, do, do you actually not want to be there? That's real. Is it a lack of preparedness? You're rushing out the door. 
you're you're rushing through uh, traffic, you didn't account for certain variables and obstacles. That's real life too. Um, so take stock of why you are late. I want to bring your attention to 1 Corinthians 13, 4b to 5. Love is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. Or in short, love does not offend. When we come into spaces tardy, as the culture would dictate, you're forcing people to accommodate you where they wouldn't have necessarily opted to do so, right? Um, and to put it in kindergarten terms, it's not fair. <laughs> it's not fair that you're late and everybody else is there and, and ready to go. So first Corinthians 13, four B and five are a good representation of that. Um, it is rude to walk in late and quite arrogant indeed to think that for some reason um, the show should stop as you settle into the room and prepare um, to engage in whatever activity. And uh, third on that, you must take accountability for your offensive nature. There's nothing cute about being tardy guarantee people would rather you be on time which is why you were invited to this activity or event um or expected to be there um at any rate so take accountability i am tardy quite consistently and this impacts others you affect your own impression management and inconvenience others and that needs to be noted and at least said out loud uh, whether or not you end up doing something with it which leads me to my next point what if anything have you tried thus far um, and this could look a number of ways uh, setting alarms accounting for variables such as traffic or weather um, you could use Google Maps if you didn't know how far something is away from you. That's okay. I think that's completely uh, reasonable. But you could throw that address into Google Maps instead of guessing. And even if, because grace does exist, right? Even if you didn't know that once upon a time and you were late, now you do know that you can use Google Maps literally for everywhere you go. Um, there's one job site I go to that is about 10 minutes away. And I still use Google Maps, not because I don't know where it is, but because Google Maps accounts for traffic and weather. And so 10 minutes uh, on a Saturday night could turn into 15 minutes, but 10 minutes on a Tuesday at 1 p.m. could really be a seven minute drive. So just holding yourself accountable that way and saying out loud, like I'm inconveniencing others. This meeting started at 10 a.m. and I'm walking in at 10.05, people have to repeat things, they have to move their seating, um, so on and so forth. And I just want to call out a lie we tell ourselves, which is we're not important and it doesn't matter if we're late. If you were invited, um, even if you were voluntold to be there, uh, you, you, you need to be there. You need to be there. Somebody wanted you there. Somebody thought there was some value that you could bring to the table and you're meant to be there. And friend, you're meant to be there on time. Hello? <laughs> um, and then next, how serious are you about fixing the problem of your tardiness? 
I do leave room for the fact that maybe you just don't care. We all know somebody who just says, I am late, and they tack that onto their chest as a, as a personality trait. I'm always late. Uh, that's, again, that's not, that's not loving others well to inconvenience others or to make force people to accommodate you due to foreseeable events and factors in your own life uh, again it's just not fair so how serious are you about fixing this number one what incentive do you have to change this behavior if it's a job right <laughs> baby give me the money give me the money so um you could be looking at getting fired or written up or um you know, some kind of consequence in that manner. You also affect your respect and others' perceptions of you, which ultimately could affect opportunities. If there is a promotion to be had, are they going to pick the person who can't get to where they need to be on time? Uh, in other words, um, that take their responsibilities seriously? Or are they going to pick the person who um, provides a, a good image for the company by uh, having an outlet, an outpouring of a good image of themselves, right? Which one are they going to choose? They're going to choose the person who knows how to get to where they need to be on time, friend. Uh, next. Have you processed the deeper meaning behind why you are tardy? So again, it could be a cultural thing. Um, I grew up on a in a in a beach town on the beach, and I was homeschooled as a child. So it didn't really matter if I got to the kitchen table for schoolwork on time, as long as my work got done. And so how does this serve me today? Am I missing out on opportunities and events? Am I stressed? Am I dysregulated because I have to rush and hurry to get into these spaces? How is it serving me to be tardy? How is it serving me to not address this? Can I afford to continue to be late in every space? Am I losing relationships? Um, myself, I'll be honest, tardiness is not really something I would receive from a friendship. Maybe a few times and obviously with reason, but my time is valuable too. And if we're supposed to be hanging out and you're 30 minutes late, that was 30 minutes that I could have been doing something else instead of just waiting for you. So, you know, um, and if that's me who doesn't tolerate tardiness and my friendships and relationships, um, surely somebody else can relate as well. And then um, next, have you considered an accountability partner such as uh, a friend, a partner, or even an app? That can help you track your time management, uh, hold you accountable. Um, maybe someone you could um, set up a reward system with. These are all things you can do if you are serious about fixing the problem of tardiness. And finally, a biblical approach toward tardiness. Approaching tardiness with humility, prayer, and intentionality. So number one, understand that you're human and you make mistakes. That's the with reason part, right? Sometimes there's an accident or if you have children or pets, life can get a little wild, right? Um, so you are human. You do make mistakes. Friend, you are also 
capable of changed behavior. You can turn this around. You can decide today your next event or activity. I will be on time. And how do you do that? You ask the Holy Spirit. This is the prayer part. You ask the Holy Spirit to help you love others well by honoring their time. Ask him. Ask him. It's free. The, the gift of the Holy Spirit is free. And, and grace is free, too. Grace upon grace upon grace. The Lord really does know your heart and knows your intentions. Um, but you do, too, friend. And if you could do better, then ask the Holy Spirit for help in that diligence and, and patience. Um, also ask him to help you put others before yourself, right? The first greatest commandment is to love the Lord. The second greatest commandment is to love others. And you can look at the entirety of First Corinthians 13 uh, as a blueprint for biblical love and how you should interact with others. So again, that first Corinthians four and five, love is not arrogant or rude or insist on its own way. It's not irritable or resentful when people hold you accountable and say, man, you're late for the third time this month. That's disrespectful and not getting irritable about it because really they're right. You're being very disrespectful of their time. So you ask the Holy Spirit to help you love others and to serve others very well by putting them before yourself. Next, create a routine or plan and stick to it. Again, you can start right now, friend. <laughs> you can start right now. You know, um, I'm going to lay my clothes out tonight for the next day because I know I spend a lot of time thinking about what I'm going to wear for the day and that's an extra few minutes that I could use drinking my coffee or preparing my vehicle um, to get to work or whatever activity. And finally, I want to bring it all the way around 1 Corinthians 13, verse 11. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. It is very childish to think of me, 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 and not care about how you impact others. If you do care about how you impact others, Hold yourself accountable for changing your behavior. And you can do this in practical ways as discussed. And you also, I would lead with this, ask the Lord to help you with this deficit in your life, with this flaw, this adherence to fleshly nature that you insist upon. You don't have to live this way. You can show up on time. You do not have to be tardy, friend. You really don't. That's a choice. That's a choice. And it's an ungodly choice at that. <laughs> you know? Um, so anyway, that is my uh, biblical perspective on tardiness. Um, comment below what you, what you learned um, from this today. Share this with somebody who this could be useful for. Um, like the video if you love it. And of course, subscribe for more content. Again, I am 3 Plus Key. I'm your favorite social worker. I am here to forever and always encourage you to pursue the smile by prioritizing the Lord, your physical health, and persistent education. Uh, let's just continue to elevate and be sanctified and bask in our sanctification. I'll talk to you later.